All right, guys, before we start this video, I just wanted to go over what we'll need here for obviously obvious reasons, a Raspberry Pi 3. We'll need a case, a micro SD card to put RetroPie onto, power supply for obvious reasons, an SD card formatter to format the SD card, Win32 disk imager to write the image to the SD card, and 7-zip or any other unzipping method to actually unzip the file once we've downloaded it and an internet or home network connection to transfer the ROMs onto our Raspberry Pi. What is up guys, John the Retro Bro here and welcome to this full tutorial on how to build your Retro Pi from the ground up. This is gonna go from assembly all the way to putting Retro Pi on the SD card and then to putting some games on there. So this is your one-stop shop video Let's get started. There are going to be a few things you are going to need first. So this is a basic Kana kit. This is, comes off, you can get these on Amazon for $49. You get yourself a nice clear case. Uh, this is a very good case, by the way. You get a AC adapter. You have your board. And we are using a 32 gigabyte, a 32 gigabyte Samsung card for this one. So as you'll see here, I like these kits because they do come with the heat sinks. Some people tell you you don't need them. I don't know. I'd rather have the, the heat sinks and not need them than not have them and need them. So here's our Raspberry Pi 3 board. We're going to go ahead and get this puppy in the case first before we do anything. Nice thing about this Kana kit, you don't need any screws. You don't need any screwdrivers. Everything just pops in nicely. Now, a big mistake I made early on with this kit was I would put the heat sinks on first. Um, put, put them on after you put the case in. You'll see why here in a second. And that's why right there. Sometimes I would miss and I uh, would knock the heat sinks off. So this snaps right in. Don't be scared, you're not gonna break it. Now the only thing that does suck is I will say these use the 3M tape. They the Kana kit did used to use the um, the bonding, the better stuff. They say that the tape doesn't really help, especially when they're on these heat sinks. They say it does more, it insulates it rather than cools it. I'll be honest with you though, I haven't had any heat problems on mine. The only time I ever had any issues when it came to um, overheating was when I had overclocked my Raspberry Pi. If you want to do that, go for it. Although I can tell you from experience, I really didn't see much of an improvement when it came to certain things like N64. It still didn't play all that great. Uh, and I would over, I would even get some overheating when I would be playing like Super Nintendo stuff. So here we go. Raspberry Pi is in the case now. We just have a board. So now we just have a computer board here. So essentially a mini computer is what we got. This thing's worthless when it's just there. So now we're gonna go ahead and go over to the PC. We're gonna show you guys how to install RetroPie onto the 32 or 16, whatever size you're going to use. We will show you guys how to get RetroPie onto the card so that we could put in the SD card slot right there. One thing I will tell you, the uh, nice thing is about this case, all your ports are in the front, so I just sit there. You get four USB, Ethernet, HDMI, headphone jack, and power. All right, let's go over the PC and get RetroPie onto the SD card. All right, so here we are on the PC. We're gonna go ahead and slide our SD card into our computer. notification there she is in we are good to go now there's going to be two programs you are going to need you're going to need this SD card formatter just type in SD formatter this will be the one that comes up and you can see we got 29.8 so go ahead and down that SD card formatter version I'm using version 4.0 and go ahead and download that 
And then we want to just go ahead and drive F, format our SD card. It's already formatted. I just prefer to do this, to be honest with you. It just makes sense. It's just the way I've always done it. Why not? Does, doesn't need to fix what's not broken. All right, so next program you're going to need is a disk imager. I use Win32 Disk Imager. You're going to need that as well. So before we open Win32 Disk Imager, we are going to need the RetroPie image. So we'll go ahead and go to Internet Explorer. You're going to go to retropie.org.uk. Go to Get RetroPie. And we're using a Raspberry Pi 3, so we're going to select this one right here. Save file. Now to open the Raspberry Pi image, you are going to need some sort of um, unzipping program. I personally like to use Win7 or 7-zip. I know some people use WinRAR. I use Win7, Win just personal preference, but you're going to need something to unzip that file. All right, so once that's done downloading, you're going to want to go ahead and open up your 7-zip or WinRAR, whichever one you're using. And you're going to go ahead and extract that RetroPie image. And you're going to go ahead and either extract it or move it to one of your folders. I already have mine extracted. Or in 7-zip, it comes up as extracted. And so I'm going to put mine in a stock RetroPie image so we can find it when we transfer it to Win32 or when we write it from Win32. It's going to give me a message not implemented because I actually already have that file in there. But for you, you're going to be able to either move it or transfer the image to wherever you want it to go. So once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and open up Win32 Disk Imager. You're going to want to go ahead and point it to where you have your image. So again, mine is in my stock RetroPie folder that I created. And we're looking for RetroPie 4.3. That is the one we want. And we're going to go ahead and select our F drive and we're going to go ahead and write it. We're going to get select yes and we're going to let it write and we're going to let it do its thing. All right, we got it right successful. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now we can take our SD card out of our PC and now put that into the actual Raspberry Pi itself. So just go ahead and pull that out. A nice little sound here. Here's what you want. Back to here. Full tutorial guys, we're showing everything on this episode. Alrighty, so now we have it. We are ready to hook this guy up to the television. I'll show you guys how to boot it up for the first time, and then we're going to show you guys how to put some ROMs on it so you can start playing some games. All right, guys, so once we are in and we have that SD card into our Pi, you will get a first time boot up screen on your Raspberry Pi. And you'll go ahead and see the scrolling images. Just disregard this, it'll all be normal. What you want to wait? You want to see this now we are good to go retro pi is on the card in the raspberry pi and we just got to configure our controller and we'll be ready to put some games on here so just be patient here sometimes it does take a couple minutes like i said it is doing its first time thing it's got to run through the process it's not going to do this every time you boot it up and honestly once it's actually on and you got games on it you can leave it on it uses almost no power it's only using a two point or three amp power supply super simple all right now we can going to configure our controller i am using a snes controller snes usb so we're going to go ahead and just press any button
All right, so I don't have any analog sticks, so what we're gonna do is to pass over these, you're just gonna hold down a button, hold down a button, and keep holding it down at each one, and it'll go ahead and bypass. So you can see the top, hold any button to skip. That's what we wanna do. Boom, okay. Now we're at RetroPie. We don't have any games, so I'm gonna put some games on it. So the way I'm gonna show you guys how to put games on here, this is the easiest way to do it. It's just a simple drag and drop method. We are gonna to need to use our computer. The first thing you're gonna to need to go on the Pi is you're gonna to have to go ahead and hook up your Wi-Fi. So you'll go into your Wi-Fi, you could do Wi-Fi or you could do your LAN. I prefer plugging it in directly hardwired into my LAN network. But for sake of argument, if you're away from your router or you're somewhere else in the house or you know whatever, you wanna to connect to Wi-Fi, you are gonna need a keyboard for this process. You're gonna hit connect to Wi-Fi and you're gonna go in through there and enter your password once you find it. So you can see our Wi-Fi. We wanna go ahead, once you select the one you want, you're gonna enter your password. I'm not gonna enter my password here because I don't wanna show you guys my password. It's not like it matters. So once you're connected, you'll go to exit. Or like I said, if you're plugged directly hardwired, we're gonna plug in. Now we're ready to put some pot, some games, the bread and butter, we're gonna put some games on it. All right, so we're gonna exit out of this, guys. I'm gonna show you, um, oh yeah. So first thing you wanna do, sorry, before you do that, I'm gonna show your IP, okay? So you're gonna go in here, because you may need this. And go ahead and then you know write down your IP address for that and you want to go ahead and remember that because we're gonna need that so write down your IP you're gonna need that you may or may not I'm gonna show you guys an easier way to do it but keep it in mind just in case you do need it all right let's go over to the PC and we'll show you what we need to do to get some games on it all right guys so now we want to throw some ROMs onto our retro pie I'm going to be doing this via network transfer this is by far the easiest way to do it it's a simple drag and drop method. You do just have to make sure your Pi is connected to your home network as well as your PC that you're using. I'm gonna be doing this using Windows 10. And we're gonna to go to our documents or network internet, explore, whatever, explore network drive. Anyways, open up your files. You wanna click network. Should see retro Pi. We'll let that load. Now you're going to see splash screen, ROMs, BIOS, configs. Click on ROMs. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and throw a Nintendo ROM on there. Pull up your ROMs folder, whichever, wherever you need to go. Actually, we're not gonna use that folder. I've got a better folder we're gonna use. I just have to remember where I put it. I envy people who have a nice, clean desktop. We're going to throw a Genesis game on here because I don't feel like looking for my ROMs folder. And we're going to go to, I believe Genesis comes up as Mega Drive, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so we'll go Mega Drive. And we'll go with one of my favorite games, Castlevania Bloodlines. We're going to copy it from our folder onto our computer and into that ROMs folder. Mega 16 bits, 8 bit games literally take next to no time at all. So now we have a game in our Mega Drive folder on our Pi. Let's go back over to our Pi and play some games. All right, so guys, when you go back to your Pi, you're obviously going to notice the game's not there. So, what we want to do is restart Emulation Station to 
essentially just do a, a reset and it will be there. So just hit start, go to quit, restart emulation station. Hit yes, we'll get a reboot. Um, and we'll see Mega Drive here. The reason why you're seeing Dreamcast there is because I did go ahead and download Rycast. We'll make a future video on that. And we have class Castlevania Bloodlines. Let's see how she plays. One of my favorite Castlevania games, by the way, without a doubt. Booting up good. One player solid. Sounds good. And there we are. Nice and Mega Drive. Just that easy, gentlemen. So, again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll try and get back to the T the best I can. Um, again, this was the full tutorial. So, from the very beginning, you shouldn't need anything else. Uh, don't be too intimidated. It's really not that hard. If you have any questions just go ahead and ask below guys and um, you know be, uh, feel free to share the video for those looking to possibly do it themselves and uh, thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next video this video is brought to you by retrobrogaming.com if you enjoyed this video support the channel by clicking the link below where you can get pre-built Raspberry Pi 3 kits so you can enjoy all your retro favorites. Visit the apparel shop and get your custom Retro Bro t-shirts and workout tanks. Thanks for watching, and do you even Retro Bro?